Keep your eyes closed. Don't look into some of your eyes open. Because there's no right way or wrong way. There's just my way, which is the right way. Isn't that right? Hello everyone, and welcome to Film Sandwich. I'm Kid Ron Burgundy. And I'm Mark. And on today's episode, we're discussing NAB 2022. Now, we didn't get to go to NAB because, you know, funds and stuff. So we're just gonna talk about some of the products that we saw on there that were interesting. There wasn't a lot of big camera announcements. There was things that were there that already had been announced like the R5C and uh, the Blackmagic 12K and some other things that we've already seen. But there are a few other products that have come out. Um, some stuff from Blackmagic. Blackmagic kind of took the cake there in NAB. Yeah, um, for sure. It's from ISU 2019. Blackmagic had a big announcement then, and now fast forward, now we're 2022, and they've had another big announcement. So what are we going to talk about first? The HD Constellation series of new switchers. Okay, starting the clock now. All right, tell me about the HD Constellation switcher. All right, so it's a long time coming. As we know, that Blackmagic had a bunch of HDMI switchers out, and everybody was like, well, where are you going to get to the SDI stuff? Well, this year, they finally did. They finally took the television HD one that was out very four, four years ago and have now updated it. And it's all routable, which is great in that form factor that fits in a one rack unit, which is awesome. Of course, it has all the standard features you think it's gonna have. Plus, you can feed it anything now. Now you don't have to play nice, nice, and make sure all the cameras are nice feeding it because that was always a problem with the first generation Blackmagic switchers. So I'm really excited about the converter. The price point's under a thousand. It's definitely a great update to the Studio HD, which apparently now is probably worthless. How much time I got left? So you got a whole minute. So I'm going to ask you a question here. So there's three models, right? Yes, there's three models. And then there's the 2ME and the 3ME. And basically go from 10, 20 to 40 inputs. And of course, the 2 and the 3 have super source, which is awesome, which basically you can put everything together, make it one kind of a source, and tie it all into a one button switch, which is great. All right, so you got about 40 more seconds left. Is there anything Great. else you can tell us about the Constellation? Yes, the Constellations, I think, also are all controllable by the panel in front, even the 3ME, which has all the inputs, all the stuff right in front. They also released uh, some new controllers with the two hardware controllers. So not only do you have the software controller, but they also have the hardware controller. A little disappointed that I did not see uh, an update to the 4K switcher that has the controls on it, the, the HD 4K. And also, all these are HD, so that's something else to think about too. So it's not a 4K switcher. All right, that's the alarm. You like that? It sounds we do. pretty fancy, right? All right, okay. it's your turn. So my turn. All right, starting the timer now. Two minutes or less, here we go, Ron's up. All right, so this is the Axoon M1 HDMI to USB-C on-camera video monitor adapter for Android smartphones. So basically what you can do here is that you can take any HDMI output and make it a USB-C that you can plug into your Android smartphone and you can use it as a camera monitor, which is really cool. That's cool. So you don't have to go buy like a big expensive monitor. You can just use the, the camera phone that you have. Um, also, you're going to be able to do, what does the uh, highlight say here? You're going to be able to power it with an NPF Sony battery. So you can power the device, the phone, and the camera all off of that Sony NPF battery. That's kind of nifty. That's pretty cool. It comes with a uh, cold shoe to put on the hot shoe part of your camera. Or cold shoe. Or the cold shoe part, whatever you got, cold or hot. So that way you can just mount it there nice and easy. Um, and then all oh, on the top of it, it also has its own cold shoe. So then you can mount something else like a microphone. So cold shoe, cold shoe, cold, just start stacking the cold shoe. Just shoes. stack the cold shoe. And you're gonna be able to uh, do um, live streaming with it oh. through your phone. Wow, that's kind of so cool. So you get HDMI into there, into the phone, and then you can, you know, live stream on Facebook, YouTube. What's the dinero? Whatever. It is only a hundred bucks. Ninety nine dollars. No, it's not. I was making that. Ninety nine dollars. Is it really? It's ninety nine dollars. Dude, a hundred bucks? Seriously? Yeah. What else can wow. you do? So it says, yeah, live stream. That's you can check cool. focus. You can add LUT overlays. Um, let's see here. It's got a padded grip so it doesn't scratch your cell phone. So when it's like oh, clamping well, down, it's nice. like a little clamp. 
Um, and then, so it's like the DJI controllers, but not for cameras. So the speak. DJI controllers? Well, the DJI monitors that you you know use to fly your little DJI. So. Well, those are co remote controls for the camera. Yeah. Okay, that. All right, we're done. Ah, uh, sorry, right, Ron, I spoiled him. He's done. All right, so. that's cool. Hundred bucks, Axum. All right, I'm down. All right, so yep, you're next, Mark. Dude, what am I talking about? Give me some. Uh, what about the HyperDeck? HyperDeck. Okay, right. hitting, hitting the two bits. All right, now the new HyperDeck Extreme just came out by Blackmagic. Haven't had a lot of time to really look at all the specs, but I can tell you what, of course it's gonna do 8K. Of course it's gonna have- Is it 8K or 4K? 8K. It does 8K? 8K, 8K, yep. It can oh. do 8K, 4 coming in. Of course it does 4K. It has all the controls up front, big bright screen. Um, also has USB-C and you could go to external sources with it. Um, integrates everything and everywhere with the uh, the family, the Blackmagic family. And I think it's just, you know, they're getting so fancy now with the recorders. Like we've had like another deck previously that was the 4K, now it's the 8K. Now can it do 12K? Like it's all gonna just start going up the path. Um, and they've done a really good job with the bright screen and the integration with that and all the controls on the front of the deck. They try to make it more old school analog. So, you know, play, find, push all those buttons too. Um, which is nice, which I should probably have a little more spec on it. I was just looking at it, reading the stuff on it. Um, and it has some really interesting stuff for sure. Yeah, I saw on the back of it here, it has a bunch of XLR inputs and outputs. It has cool stuff. So if I go back to Black Magic and I go to the products, which is eating up my two minutes now, really, when you think about it, when I'm trying to find all this cool it's stuff. It's got uh, H.265 recording and playback ProRes support. Um, what do we got here? Multi-channel SDI and analog audio, um, PCIe catch card slot. Yeah, 12G SDI, HyperDuck Extreme AK HDR. Oh, it's HDR too, and it's 5,000 bucks. So there you go. 5,000? 5,000, 4,995. HyperDuck Extreme AK HDR. Oh, you're looking at the, yeah, I was looking at this guy here that was on B&H. No, 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 that's wrong. I'm okay. looking at this guy right here. So there's an the, 8K and then there's a 4K. The 8K, yeah, I'm talking okay, about the 8K. Okay, so there's a, there's a couple different models You're right, there's here. a 4K and a K, 8K. Okay. That's right, All that's right. true. So, uh, oh, there's the two Oh, minutes. there's my time. All right, so I guess I will talk about the, uh, whatchamacallit, the cloud. Blackmagic has this new cloud situation. Okay, so they have a couple different models. They have a 20 terabyte and an 80 terabyte. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the 80 terabyte here. I mean, it looks kind of like a, uh, computer tower itself, right? It does, it does. And, uh, it's got some ports on the back. Let's see here, so. It's 10 gig you, ethernet, four you, of those you can plug into. Right, so you, it's an eight, you got 80 terabyte NVMe M2 flash storage, which is like way faster than spinny hard drive stuff. Um, currently here at the studio, we have a Facilis, uh, which has how many terabytes? 48 terabytes. 48 terabytes, but those are the spinny hard drives, yes? They're spinny hard drives, so I got like 20 of them or something like that. Um, yeah, so it's definitely a little older tech, but at the end of the day, yeah, the price the, point is not as much as that. How much was? Uh, About 14 Gs. 14 Gs, okay, so the 80 terabyte is 30 Gs, and the 20 terabyte is 10 Gs. So 14, 20 terabytes, I got 48, you know, solid state. Um, you know, it's interesting. I don't know how this is really gonna pan out just because I think it's their first time going into like the whole network storage stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff to be considered. It's not all, you know, roses and sunshine when you start to have multiple editors hitting a server for sure. Yeah, I mean, we do it here. Like we, all our computers can connect right to the Facilis. I mean, it's pretty nice to be able to have people in different computers work on the same project. Um, so that's where this is pretty much going. But um, it's probably gonna be a little bit faster with the whole like flash storage, especially the, the NVMe uh, M2 flash storage. Those are pretty yeah, fast. But you know, it's the first one out of the gate, so I'm gonna let somebody else uh, beta 1.0 release. Yeah, that. yeah, usually, yeah. you know, version 1.0. Sometimes it looks great at the beginning, but then as time goes on, they fix all the things that went wrong with version one. But, you know, you have, um, you know, an HDMI monitoring so you can, you know, hook up a screen yeah, so you can do your stuff. Yeah, I think that's worthless, man. I mean, really, what are you gonna do? You're gonna look at how your hard drive's working all the time? Like, I think it's a waste of an HDMI port. And honestly, why couldn't they just do a web I, I, interface I, on that? I, I'm like, sure it's know, just so, just like the facilities, how you have the monitor hooked up to there so you can like uh, do. It's a server. If I wanna see the progress, I just go on the facilities, you know, 
Okay, so Mark doesn't like the the Black Magic Cloud stories. Yeah, bah bah humbug. All right, so (laughs) what else? What else we got here? We didn't even put the timer on that one, did we? General view of NAB 22, you ready? Eh. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) you know, like I really want to go to NAB. I haven't been, Mark's been one time before. But this year, I don't really think was the year. I mean, everything that camera wise was already announced before NAB even happened. Um, so really to spend all that money and fly out to Las Vegas, I mean, I'm sure there was some cool stuff there, um, but... I mean, I, it is cool, but, you know, coming out of the pandemic after two years, you know, and the, sh- the chip shortage, I mean, heck, you yeah. can't even get cameras that were made two years ago. The FX6 yeah. is still back, well, FX9 is hard to get, Yeah. so, you know, even, what are they going to do? A new yeah, camera? The, R5, the R5C was announced, but it still isn't, like, shipping, really, because, I mean, I think that there was units that ship, but they just ran out, and then they're just back-ordered right now. So, yeah. really, with, you know, this whole chip shortage and everything, it just, there wasn't like a bunch of new camera things, you know, like, you know, Kinfinity came out with a camera, but they announced it, you know, before NAB. I mean, it's a pretty badass camera. Yeah, I mean, me and Z camera has some things they're working on too. You know, I heard Z camera won an award for their little remote uh, pan, pan tilt, tilt yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah that, I can see that. They, uh, they came out with a little, but again, another, another thing that was announced before NAB, you know, so... Hopefully next year will be a better year. Yeah, next year. And if you look at the cycles of camera releases, I think the next big people that are due for Canon uh, camera releases really are Panasonic. Um, Panasonic, Well, Panasonic, they uh, GH6, GH6, which again, announced before NAB. GH6, it's no slouch, man. Yeah, but I'm talking about the higher end cameras. Like the Varicam has been out now for what, four or five years? Well, there there was the Venice 2, but that was again, wasn't that announced beforehand? I don't even know about the Venice 2. There was a Venice 2 that was uh, Oh, there. You see, you jumped ship, you went to Sony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Venice 2. I was on Panasonic World. Panasonic's due to re-up their higher end. Yeah. Sony, they're kind of due to their FX9 is getting old. Yeah, there's the, there's oh, the we're alarm. out of time? We're out of time on that. So what are your thoughts on NAB, guys? Yeah, did any of you guys go to NAB? <clears throat> is there some stuff that you guys saw at NAB that uh, you just thought was the coolest thing? Drop it down in the comments below. Until then, Thanks for uh, watching the film sandwich. Smash like, the buttons and do like, all the things. Like, subscribe, notification bell. See you next time. We're out. <laughs> Keep your eyes closed. Don't look at the sun with your eyes open. Because there's no right way or wrong way. There's just my way, which is the right way. Isn't that right? <laughs>